Welcome back. Now we'll look at the first paper two, in particular paper 21 of the May June 2024 series. And as always, you know, the mark scheme has already been released. So as well as watching this video, I will also recommend checking the mark scheme. Um, and of course, if the video is too slow, then well, watch at 1.25 or 1.5 times the speed. Right, so refer to the insert for the list of pseudocode functions and operators and algorithms developed in pseudocode before being coded in a programming language. The following table shows four valid pseudocode assignment statements. Right, complete the table by giving an appropriate data type to declare each of the variables, uh, right, A, B, C, and D. Right, the first one then, so we're going to assign, well, left of my name and then also, uh, let's say, an argument of one. Um, now, if you don't know what uh, left is going to do, again, well, here is, well, here's, yeah, the pseudocode modules, right, the insert. Um, so saying, well, left is going to take a string parameter, also, well, some integer parameter, and it's going to return a string. And in particular, it's going to return the leftmost x characters from this string. Uh, right then, an example, like A, B, C, D, right, etc. Uh, right, three. Well, that's going to return the three leftmost characters. Um, of course, if we did, you know, say five here as the parameter, or yeah, uh, well, I guess the argument, um, of course, that's going to return what A to E. Um, yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. Right, so if we think there were, uh, I guess, well, my name, well, yeah, it doesn't really matter what that is. Um, obviously, it's going to be a string. But, I mean, this, because we're only getting one, then, I mean, well, let's say a string of one character can also just be a char. So I think for this one, I mean, either we can say string, um, yeah, I mean, or we can also say char. But I think, you know, since it tells us that, well, left is going to return a string, right, well, let's just say string. Um, yeah, although, although I do know in the mark scheme, you know, they will also accept char in this case. Uh, right, the next one, well, total times two. So, I mean, again, this will really just depend on what total is. Um, obviously, if total is an integer, well, an integer times an integer is going to be an integer. But, you know, if total was, uh, well, yeah, let's say if total was a real, then, of course, you know, if we multiply it by two, uh, that can also be a real. Um, I mean, technically, if you did, for example, 1.5, uh, and I let's use the star notation asterisks, um, you know, of course, well, 1.5 times two, I mean, this technically is actually just going to equal an integer. But, of course, if we do, like, 1.6 times two, well, obviously, yeah, that's going uh, that's going to now be a real. Right, the next one, so int, item cost, then divide by three. Uh, so what int will do, let's say we have a number like 7.99. Um, I mean, basically what it's going to do, it's just going to remove the whole decimal part. So we can just think, well, yeah, that decimal part is just going to uh, kind of get removed or, uh, well, maybe truncated. Um, and then, yeah, it's just going to, well, return this seven. Now, I mean, well, I guess, yeah, in maths, you know, you can also call this the floor function. And, you know, in most programming languages, you know, this is what they also call it. Um, I think in, uh, yeah, maybe not like that. Uh, right, in mathematical notation, they would, yeah, I think they would usually write it like this. Um, so note here how we kind of have this, uh, yeah, this kind of L shape, right, with the, uh, yeah, this kind of thing at the bottom. Um, so, you know, this basically just means round down. Now, you can also have the ceiling function, where the ceiling function is going to be the opposite. Uh, let's say we have, you know, 7.01. Uh, well, that's now going to get rounded up to eight. Um, but yeah, actually in pseudocode, you know, we don't have a ceiling function like this. Uh, so anyway, so I mean, well, okay, basically this int part is always going to return an integer. But then, of course, because we're dividing by three, well, again, that has to be a real. Um, obviously, if we do nine divided by three, well, that's going to be an integer. But yeah, 10 divided by three, right, that's going to be a real. Uh, and then, well, the last one, hopefully quite easy, right, that's just going to be a string. Right, other variables in the program have example values as shown, so sorted is false, tries is nine, and right, ID is, well, this string. Right, so expression less than 10 and not sorted. Um, so I'm just gonna write down kind of each, like, uh, I don't know, maybe sub-expression, I guess. Um, so tries is less than 10, well, that's gonna be true, because here we see tries is nine. Uh, right, then if we go, well, not sorted, uh, well, sorted is false, therefore not sorted is true. So here we have, uh, well, true and true, right, that's gonna be true. Right, the next one, well, tries mod 4. Um, I mean, if we just know how to do that, well, 9 mod 4, that's just going to be 1. Now, some people, uh, yeah, I think they get confused between, well, mod and div. So the example I like to give is, well, if you have pizza, uh, let's say you have 9 bits of pizza, or, well, okay, let's say slices, right, so 9 slices of pizza and 4 people. Well, if we do div, um, that's going to tell us how many times we can kind of, like, wholly divide 9 by 4. Or in effect, like how many slices of pizza? Uh, yeah, how many slices of pizza each person will get? So in this case, well, each person is going to get two slices of pizza. 
right if instead we do what well nine mod four uh, this is saying well after we've given you know the four people two slices of pizza each uh, how much pizza is going to be remaining so that's just going to be one slice and I mean I, I guess you know the, the way you can also write it is that if we say uh, well let's yeah let's try and do this correctly um, so nine mod four that's going to be equivalent to uh, so what is going to be yeah okay so it's going to be what nine uh, nine div four and then multiplied by four uh, so I, th I think if we go like this right let's try nine minus um, right and then that's going to be yeah nine div four uh, right and then if we go yeah I guess we'll just multiply by four um, and yeah maybe let's just put that in brackets I mean obviously yeah this is quite a long-winded way of writing it but I mean this is basically what mod is doing where we uh, you know we're kind of taking what well, the original number um, then obviously we're calculating well how many bits of pizza have we given uh, yeah have we given away um, you know from doing this sort of well yeah the division uh, and then yeah whatever as well whatever's remaining is just going to be one in this case um, yeah that's probably not explained well right so maybe that's just confused people even more right the next one then uh, well obviously starting from left to right but you know when we're evaluating uh, we're going to be evaluating the inside first um, so we're doing well mid right ID three and one so mid will just get uh, well this will let us get characters right from this starting position um, and then, yeah, this will be the number of characters. So if we look at ID, uh, well, ID, we're starting on character 3, which is A, right? Because, well, Z is going to be character 1, right? Uh, G is 2, uh, yeah, A is 3. Um, and obviously, remembering that pseudocode is going to be uh, sort of index 1, right? That's where we start at. Um, yeah, whereas many program languages will be sort of index 0. Um, right, so here then, well, we're starting at character A, and then we're just getting one character. So effectively, we're just getting this big A, right? But then, of course, we go two lower. Um, so yeah, that's just going to be uh, lowercase a. Now, if we actually look at this, and uh, you know these quotes are important, right? Single quotes, uh, yeah, th these ones. Now, if we actually look, and right, I'm just going to minimise that again, or yeah, kind of exit the full screen. There's actually two operation, or well, two functions for converting, you know, well, let's say lowercase and uppercase. Um, so L case and U case, uh, these are going to take in a char, uh, let's say argument or parameter and also return a char, right, so just one character. Uh, whereas, yeah, two upper, two lower, well, they're gonna take in a string and, well, return a string. Um, so, yeah, again, that's why for this, I mean, I think we can either say that it's gonna return a char because, well, a single character is just a char, uh, but, yeah, I think I'm just gonna do the double quotes, right, just since uh, it does say two lower is, well, it's gonna return a string. Right, the next one, so, well, we get, we're gonna be concatenating, um, and, yeah, I can just write that. Uh, right, so what? Uh, okay, yeah, there we go. Uh, right, so well, I mean, you know, when we say concatenate, what that means is we're just joining strings together. So we take this ID um, and then just kind of, well, let's say add on the XX at the end. So if we look at that, well, that's going to be, well, one, two, three, five, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and then, yeah, these two is going to be eight, nine. Um, so here then, well, the length is going to be nine. And we're saying, well, is nine greater than or equal to tries? And we see, well, tries is nine. Uh, therefore, of course, well, 9 greater than or equal to 9. Uh, right, again, that's also going to be true. Right, the variable names A, B, C, and D in Python are not good programming practice. State why these variable names are not suitable. Um, right, so let's say maybe more meaningful or descriptive uh, identifier names should be used. Um, yeah, no, I think, I mean, the word they always use is meaningful. Uh, right, let's say a meaningful or descriptive. Uh, right, variable names should be used. Um, or, I mean, rather than variables, we could say identifier names. Because when we say identify as well, this means, you know, variables, constants, right, functions, procedures, um, yeah, even like types, uh, you know, so like anything we can give a name to, uh, well, that's going to be the identifier. Uh, right, so more meaningful descriptive identifier names, yeah, should be used. Uh, let's say, yeah, to make it easier. Uh, right to make it easier to understand um, I, I guess well rather than saying it we can say the code right to make the code easier to understand uh, right for us and others 
um, or yeah, we could say what other programmers or other developers. Uh, right, okay, so identify one problem that these variable names might cause. I mean, so we've, I guess we've kind of said that here, you know, so we just really want to say the opposite. Um, so what we can say that, uh, yeah, these like kind of vague identifier names will be confusing. Um, so let's say, yeah, these identifier names will be confusing. Um, yeah, and, and again, we can say, right, to us, uh, maybe like especially in future. Because, I mean, like maybe when you're programming it today, well, you understand right, what A, B, C, and D mean. But if you look at this code in like a month's time or, you know, a year's time, like probably you've forgotten what they've mean. Uh, right, so yeah, especially in future, um, right, or other programmers. Um, and I, I guess we can say, well, hence it's sort of, I don't know, I, I guess you say, well, easy to make a mistake. Um, you know, and to be honest, like people just don't like working with confusing code because obviously well, if something is confusing, um, yeah, people are just going to get frustrated. Right, the choice of suitable variable names is one example of good programming practice. Give one other example. Um, I mean, so I, I'm just going to write a few, of course, yeah, in the exam, just write one. I mean, so one they say is going to be indentation. Uh, and I mean, hopefully people know what indentation is, but just to give an example, uh, let's just have if. Um, and of course, you're going to have what if some condition right then. Uh, and I guess, yeah, finally, you're going to have the end if at the end. Um, and actually, yeah, let's write that as one word. Um, and of course, so we, we see here, this is kind of, you know, in, well, this position, right, this indentation level. But then, you know, the code we actually write inside that, well, that should be indented. So what that means is like effectively, well, these spaces, right, all this tab. Um, and I don't know, like, let's just go like output or something. Um, I mean, I don't know, let's, let's go like ABC, right, it doesn't really matter. Um, yes, yeah, so of course, here we say, well, the indentation. And the reason you would use that, because, uh, I mean, sometimes I see people that don't, and, you know, they'll have like 10 if statements, 10 for loops, right, no indentation. And basically, it's kind of impossible to work out, you know, which code is inside which other block. Um, and then you're thinking, well, like, is this if statement, you know, inside like this one for loop? Or, yeah, is it inside these two for loops? Um, you know, so, yeah, it's just quite confusing. Uh, right, I guess the next one they also say, well, we can also say comments. Um, and then I suppose we can also say, uh, let's say maybe use of modules. Um, and, you know, when we say modules, well, that just, I mean, that means functions, procedures. So you could say, right, use of modules to break code down into logical sections. Um, yeah, and I, I guess, I mean, the advantage for this, because sometimes they ask, so if they say the advantage, you know, what's the advantage of using modules? Uh, you want to say, well, it's, it's going to be easier to test because, you know, we can just individually test those modules. Uh, right, also it's going to be sort of easier to update, easier to add features because, you know, we only uh, we only need to make changes in this one module. Um, whereas let's imagine, you know, rather than making modules, like you just copy and paste the same code over and over. Well, if suddenly now you need to change it or, you know, there's some mistake or, yeah, you need to add a new feature, um, and of course, yeah, now you've got to change it in 10 different places, right, rather than, you know, just one place if you actually, uh, yeah, broke it down and put it in its own module. Question two, an algorithm has three steps. It will repeatedly input a pair of numeric values A and B. Then it will count the number of pairs that are input until A has been greater than B 10 times. And finally, it's going to output the number of pairs that were input. Right, so, I mean, this step two, just to explain this, because, yeah, maybe some people are a bit confused. Um, I mean, what this is saying is, of course, what if they enter A and B, uh, let's say the first time they enter what A is 2, let's say B is 5, uh, well, of course, here A is smaller than B, right, therefore, you know, this count is not going to increment, but let's say the next time, well, A is 7, and let's say, I don't know, B is 4, uh, well, then, of course, yeah, this count will increment, um, so, I mean, we're, we're just going to do this whole process of inputting pairs, right, until we have, you know, right, 10 cases, and I don't know, maybe there's another one here. Uh, yeah, until we have 10 cases where, well, A is bigger than B. Um, so I, I guess, well, the, the first thing we have to do, and, you know, here we can look at the box shape. Uh, I mean, so, well, yeah, this shape, well, obviously, it's a rectangle. So a rectangle, that means it's going to be a process. Um, 
so I mean here then well we can think this this can just be assignment or it can be yeah some sort of uh, yeah I, I guess well mostly just assignment to be honest um, you know of course like if let's say we were doing something like calling uh, right if, if we were for example like calling a uh, procedure well then we would use this one right to call a procedure um, so well let's think about the variables we need to uh, assign so one we can probably call uh, I don't know, maybe like count a bigger than b, or just uh, yeah, count a bigger. I think I think that should be fine. Um, so let's go set right since we're using flowcharts. Uh, so let's go right set a, or yeah, maybe count a bigger. Uh, right, let's say two. Right, so that's going to be two zero. Um, right, and then I think we also need to set uh, well, it's going to be a count of the number of pairs. Because, for example, like let's say here, that I don't know, maybe it takes them like 13 attempts, right, for them to enter, you know, 10 numbers where A is bigger. Um, so yeah, this can be what the pair count or the yeah count pairs. Uh, and again, we're also going to set that to zero. Right, then they're going to input A and B. Right, and well, so then they're going to do something else. Uh, I guess yeah, this this process here. Right, then we got some well decision. Um, now let's think what this decision is probably going to be. So probably the uh, the decision will be well yeah is right so is a uh, greater than b, and then well let's say uh, what well, yeah is or if uh, right if a is greater than b, um, well then I guess here this will be where we're going to be incrementing the what uh, count a bigger, um, yeah so we're we're just incrementing that one, right and then I guess this yeah this last decision uh, this will be the if uh, what if we've entered ten numbers or ten pairs where a is greater than b. Uh, yeah, so I think that makes sense. So if we think then, like what what this first one is going to be, um, like here we want to think. Well, we want to increment the number of pairs, because like we couldn't increment the number of pairs, you know, in this position here, because if we do that, well, that's only going to increment, you know, if we have this yes condition. But if, for example, they enter what well, a is three and b is five, um, well, then it's not going to increment. But yeah, well, of course, yeah, we would want that to increment. Um, right, so let's just go set. And um, that's going to be what the pair count. Right, I'm just going to call it PC because it's using too much space. Um, although, of course, yeah, in the exam, you know, well, write down whatever variable name you called it. Uh, right, so yeah, we just increment the pair count. Then what we want to say, well, is, um, right, so is A, and um, that's going to be greater than B. Uh, right, and then let's have the question mark. So, well, yeah, I guess if it is, or yeah, is it? Uh, right then what we're going to do we're going to increment uh, so let's go set um, and I think we'll count a bigger so let's go CAB right and that's going to be well 2 CAB right and then plus 1 uh, right then this last one I, I guess there's a few ways we can do it so we could go uh, we could go what is and this is CAB so yeah is the count well let's say the count of the you know a times bigger um, and then what if that is equal to 10? So we could go, yeah, if it's equal to 10, right, then this would be yes, right, this would be no. Uh, alternatively, we could go, right, yeah, if the count bigger is, what, less than 10? So if it's less than 10, but then I guess what this one would then have to be yes, because, uh, you know, this means, well, we're, uh, we're going to be doing the loop again, right, this one is there going to be no. Um, and I think out the end, what I just wanted us to output. Uh, and then was it the pair count? Yeah, so the number of pairs. Um, right, so let's go PC like that. Okay, then it says step one of the algorithm has changed. The uh, right, a variable this sequence is used to enter a sequence of 10 pairs of numeric values using a single input statement. Right, following the input of this sequence, the revised algorithm will extract the pairs of numbers, describe the variable, this sequence, and how these numbers are extracted. Right, so this one's a bit confusing. I mean, when it's saying extracted, I mean, usually that's the word they would use in regards, uh, well, let's say maybe in relation to strings. Um, and like, I think the reason it's a bit confusing is because if we look at, well, this input statement they've done here, like they're actually just inputting multiple values. So people might think, well, you can just go, what well, input, uh, yeah, A, B, C, uh, you know, obviously D, F, uh, what is it, J, possibly this is the tenth character. Um, yeah, so uh, what well, people might think, you know, you can just have like 10 inputs like that. But to be honest, you know, in pseudocode, they don't really support this syntax. 
and flow charts. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But yeah, I mean, like since here they're talking about extracting, I think really they're talking about strings. Um, and, you know, likewise, you, you couldn't really do it with an array because, I mean, well, really for an array, you know, that should be inside a loop. Um, because, like, maybe you go, let's say, input, uh, and you can do, uh, hang on, yeah, you can do something like A and then index N. Um, but, of course, you know, this would have to be inside a for loop, um, which, yeah, well, obviously, you could do that, you know, with a flowchart. Um, right, so let's say here, then, uh, yeah, they can input a string, uh, or let's say the user could input a string. Um, or let, well, let's say yeah, a string uh, right of, and um, that's going to be 10 numbers. Um, but then we want to think, well, how are they going to be separated? Because, you know, we can't just go sort of like, what, 1, 2, 3, 4? Because, well, we think, uh, like, is that the number 12 and 34, right? Is it the number 123 and 4? Um, yeah, obviously, we, you know, we don't know how they're separated. Uh, right, so input string of 10 numbers, uh, or let's say separated, um, yeah, by a specific character. Uh, right, let's give an example, right, e.g. a space or comma. Um, right, and then what we can say, yeah, I guess we would say what that string would have to be passed. Uh, so maybe, yeah, what the program could loop through that string. Uh, right, okay, yeah, loop through the string character by character. Um, and then what we can say is what we can say is kind of going to start a new number uh, right when it sees that separated character. Uh, so yeah, let's say right passing out each number. Uh, right, let's say passing out each number right and starting a new number right when it sees the separated character. Um, and I mean, you know, obviously for here, this is quite a lot for two marks, but like sometimes they're, yeah, they're kind of a bit strange in like the, the points that they expect for two marks. Um, you know, like I, I guess, well, you might write something short and you think that's going to be good enough. But yeah, for some reason, you know, they just won't have the point that you said. Um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, this is why it's good to always write kind of more than they expect. Because well, like even if, let's say, we only get one mark for this part, you know, hopefully by writing this extra part, you know, like maybe that's going to be another mark. Uh, right, so starting a new, uh, I guess, what new number uh, when the what separator character is seen. Uh, right, character is seen. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, the diagram shows an abstract data type ADT representation of a linked list after data items have been added. Right, PS is the start pointer, so I guess what well, pointer start. Uh, right, so pointer, right, so well, the free, uh, yeah, the free list pointer, right, pointer free. Uh, labels, right, DF, DC, DB, and DY represent the data items of nodes in the list. Right, labels F, G, H, M, and W represent the data items of nodes in the free list. And yeah, this kind of O represents, uh, right, the null pointer. Right, describe the list immediately after initialization before any data items are added. Yeah, so, I mean, if we look at this one, well, of course, here they've already added, what, four data items. Uh, yeah, if we look at these four. Um, so what we can say, and yeah, maybe I can try and draw a diagram. Right, so, I mean, when, like, when they first, uh, well, yeah, I guess when they first initialize it, uh, we say, what, the PS, and let's try and draw it the same as what they've got. Um, I mean, well, th this is just going to point, and... Yeah, I mean, I guess here, well, let's just say it's going to point to the null pointer um, because, well, there's going to be nothing in the list. And then what that means is, well, the, the free list pointer, I mean, that's going to have everything. So that's going to have what this D, F, D, C, yeah, D, B, D, Y. Um, so you'd say, well, all of these, they're also going to be in the free list pointer. Uh, sorry, well, uh, yeah, I guess what the free list, you know, list. Um, so, of course, yeah, I mean, this one is therefore going to have like eight items or, yes, or eight nodes. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know, is there anything else we need to say? 
I suppose what you could say then is you could say the free list pointer, well this will point to the first element or the first node right in this free list, uh, which I guess in this case, I mean that would probably, yeah that would be this one, um, like assuming they've not done any you know, sort of inserting, deleting, reordering. Um, yeah, alright, so let's let's try and say that. Um, so we can say what the, uh, let's say the PS, uh, right, would be initialized, or yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, uh, well, let's say would contain, uh, right, let's say the value of the null pointer, um, yeah, or we could say, well, that would point, yeah, okay, well, let's say it's going to contain the null pointer value. Um, and, you know, usually for the null pointer, they just say minus one. Uh, right, yeah, let's say the null pointer value. Um, and we can say, well, eg minus one. Uh, right, and that, well, let's say, yeah, while the, uh, right, while the pf, uh, yeah, will point to the first element in the free list pointer. Um, yeah, okay, right, point, yeah, okay, point to the first element in the free list pointer. Uh, yeah, I guess, well, I mean, yeah, not in the free list pointer, I'm just in the free list. Um, and, I mean, you could say, I mean, basically, you know, that's going to be the index, right? So if we say like this one is at index zero in the array, or yeah, I guess if we're using pseudocode, let's start index one. Um, of course, if this is starting at index one, well, then we say, yeah, the free list is, uh, you know, therefore has the value one, right? Just the first element. Um, and I think then we can also say, yeah, maybe all, uh, let's say all nodes will be in the free list at this point. Uh, right, let's say you're in the free list, right, when, uh, I don't know, when the program first runs, or uh, maybe let's say when initialized. Um, yeah, okay, and I, I think that should be okay. And then I, I guess you could also mention this, you could say, well, the last, uh, right, let's say the last node in the free list um, is, yeah, just going to point to the null pointer, All right? So I think if you want, you could also... Yeah, like, may, well, maybe they would give you a mark for saying that. Right, a program will be written to include a linked list to sort alphanumeric user IDs. And yeah, let me just zoom in a second. Uh, right, uh, the design uses two variables and two 1D arrays to implement the, well, the linked list. Each array uh, element contains two data. Uh, okay, sorry, right, it contains data of a single data type and not a record. Right, the statement below describe the design. Right, so I think what they're saying then is, uh, well, again, obviously you've got this, uh, well, let's say PS, uh, also the PF. Um, right, then we're just going to have, an, like, maybe I'll just do sort of some simple ones. Uh, yeah, just like a small array. So let's say, of course, well, this is going to be, uh, okay, well, let's go index 1, right, index 2, index 3, index 4. Um, and right, this can be our other array. Now, I mean, the I guess the first one, I mean, this can probably have the data. So let's say we have the string A. Uh, let's say B or let's say C, let's say D. Um, and of course, yeah, if they're strings, you know, you should probably do the quotes for these. Um, right then, if we look at the next one, well, this will just have the place they point to. So I guess here, well, the, I mean, if, if we're thinking that like nothing has been added, uh, what we would say is we would say, well, the free list pointer is gonna point to this, uh, you know, sort of index one. Um, and then we say, well, index one, for example, that can then point to index two, right? Uh, yeah, index, uh, hang on, right, index 2 is therefore going to point to index 3, right, index 3 will point to index 4, um, and then, th well, this one, index 4, right, that's just going to point to the null pointer just like this. So, yeah, I think that's what they're trying to create. Um, and, of course, while well, we say the start pointer, uh, I mean, that's just going to have the value, right, the null pointer. Um, but, of course, you know, when we add the first item, well, if, yeah, if we add A to this, uh, well, I guess, yeah, A is obviously going to go uh, sorry, okay, so in, well, in this case, the start pointer is now going to point to 1. Um, and now, well, the free list pointer is now going to point to 2. Right, and well, that's because we see here. Um, we see here that the, uh, yeah, this node is therefore going to point to 2. 
Right, so yeah, two variables will be of type, right, so that's saying well the start pointer and the free pointer, so they're going to be integers. Um, and yeah, I guess this, you know, you can even capitalize, right, it doesn't really matter, right? The two variables will be used as something to the arrays, uh, so that's going to be pointers. Right, the value stored in the two variables will indicate, um, so what we can say the, uh, right, let's say the start, I mean, well, okay, yeah, let's say the index of the first node in the list, right, because that's going to be the start pointer. Uh, right, yeah, index of first node in list. Um, and let's put in brackets, well, that's going to be the PS. Uh, right, then, well, let's say, right, and. Uh, so if we think, well, the free list pointer, that's going to be the, uh, let's say, the next. Um, I, mean, I guess we can say what the next position that the element should be inserted at. Yeah, okay, so I think that's okay, right? The next, uh, maybe the next index, uh, right, that a new element should be inserted at. Or, yeah, I guess, well, a new node or a new element, uh, yeah, should be inserted. Um, and then that one, I mean, let's put in brackets, well, that's going to be the PF. Right, so the, well, the first 1D array, uh, let's say that's going to be of type string. Um, and I mean, well, the reason it's a string is because, uh, yes, yeah, it's right, alphanumeric user IDs. Right, the first 1D array will be used, uh, right, okay, so well, I, get, I, get, I guess we say what, to store the alphanumeric user IDs. Um, yeah, so let's just kind of draw a line. So we say what, to store, uh, yeah, to, right, to store those. Uh, the second 1D array, well, that's gonna be of type integer. Um, and then that will be used, uh, well, let's say to store the, uh, let's say, well, okay, so to store the node that this node points to. Um, or I guess we can say, well, to store, yeah, I don't know, maybe to store a pointer to the next node. Um, but I, mean, I don't know, let's try and be more detailed, right, to uh, store the node, uh, yeah, that this current node points to, or maybe, yeah, that this node points to. Question four says, a global 1D array data contains 100 elements of type integer. A function check, uh, right, will check the total element values, uh, right, in the order index location, so one, three, five, nine, or et cetera. Oh yeah, well, I guess one, three, five, seven, nine. Right, total the element values in even index locations, right, two, four, six, eight. Right, return one of three strings, odd, even, or same, to indicate which total is greater, right, or whether the totals are the same. Right, and then we just want to write pseudocode for this function. Um, so if you well, yeah, if, if you want to get this kind of starter code, um, of course, as always, you know, go to exam questions, right? Scroll down, find A levels, uh, yeah, find this, you know, correct paper, correct question. Um, and you know, if you just want to generate new data, I well, just pl uh, press this one, right? But let's just open this, um, and yeah, I'm also going to maximize the screen, right? So I'm just going to paste the instructions, uh, okay? Um, right, so first then, well, let's just try and write the function header or all the function signature, and that's going to be check. And if we look, I mean, this doesn't actually need any parameters. So let's go returns, and this is going to return, well, yeah, uh, let's say something of type string. Um, now we want to think what local variables we need, and I guess, well, one is just going to be an odd total, right? There's also going to be an even total. Um, yeah, no, I think, I mean, that should be all we need, right? Then let's just make sure to initialize these. Uh, right, yeah, just to give them the value of zero, right, or assign them the value of zero. And I think this, I mean, there's actually a few ways we can do it. Like, and I, I guess, yeah, okay, all right, so I think I'll try all of these different ways. So let's go N, um, and we can call it index, right? We can call it N. Uh, yeah, maybe let's go index. Right, so let's go one to 100. Um, yeah, since 100 is the length of the array, right, then let's go next index. And the way we can check if a number is odd or even, uh, well, for that we can just use mod. So let's go if index mod 2, um, right, if this is equal to 0, well, then it's even. 
um, right, and then yeah, if we have else, uh, well, else, uh, yeah, okay, else means it's going to be odd. Because if we think, for example, well, 2 mod 2 is going to be 0, right, 4 mod 2 is 0, 6 mod 2 is 0. Uh, but then, for example, 1 mod 2 is 1, uh, yeah, 3 mod 2 is 1, right, etc. Um, so here then we just want to go what even total and then just add to this. Right, and then that's going to be, uh, yeah, okay, data, right, so data is the name of the 1D array. Um, yeah, that should be fine. And then, I mean, here, of course, we can just do the same for the odd total. Right, and then once we finish this for loop, well, then we can just have an if statement. Um, and yeah, this will actually well, need to be a nested if statement since we've got uh, three different possible outcomes. Right, so uh, I guess the first one, what if the odd total, I mean, let's do this, right? If the odd total is greater than the even total, um, right, then we just want to return odd. Um, and yeah, make sure just to cre uh, check the capitalizations, right? So it's going to be big first letter, right, then smaller. Um, right, let's go else, and here then we're going to need another condition, so if the even total is greater than the odd total, right, then we just want to go return even. Um, right, let's have another else, then let's have the end if, and I guess here, well, this will just be, what is it, the same? Um, yeah, so I think that should work. Um, and to be honest, like, I I'm just going to, I'm just going to output the totals, you know, just so we can see. Um, although, yeah, of course, you know, in the exam, don't actually do this. Uh, yeah, and I guess, well, we will need to also call this. So let's go output and let's go check. Um, again, you know, this is just for testing, right? Obviously, uh, yeah, in the exam, you don't need to output the result. Uh, okay, yeah, so here we see even is bigger, right, which makes sense. Now, let's just add something huge to the odd position. Uh, I guess like this one. Let's make it, yeah, 5,800. Um, yeah, now that's going to say odd. Uh, I mean, if we just make this one, yeah, because I, I want to try and see the difference. Um, right, so what do we need to add to this? Well, that's going to be, so what, 154? So if we make this, yeah, if we make that 155, maybe they're going to be the same. Um, yeah, okay, right, so this seems to work. Now, again, of course, the, well, there is another way to do that. Like, rather than, uh, rather than looping through every index, right, 1 to 100, um, we could do something like this where we have step and if we have a step of two and I, I guess really I mean one way we could do it is if we have two separate loops uh, so yeah if we do something like this right then we just go odd total uh, that's going to be the odd total uh, then what plus yeah the data index um, right so we can then copy that uh, and hang on right so I, I guess here well we want to go right one two ninety nine um, although in this case, actually 1 to 100 would also work because, uh, you know, it would get to 99, right? Then it would go to 101. Um, and of course, yeah, that would sort of fail the condition. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that, that loop, you know, wouldn't happen. Um, right, and then, I mean, let's think if we want to do the even loop, well, we can go 2 to 100 again, step of 2. Uh, and of course, we would then, uh, let's just copy that even total. Um, so this should also work. It should give us the same. Uh, yes, yeah, so if, if we run that, okay, it also gives us the same. Um, and I mean, hopefully that makes sense how it's working because, well, when we say step of two, uh, that means that, well, the index is going to start at one, right? But then it's going to go to three, to five, to seven. Uh, basically, it's going to be plusing two each time of the index. Um, and of course, you know, we can also make this, for example, like 0 0.5. Uh, we can also make this, I don't know, like negative five, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, that, that's all going to work. Um, like, of course, I mean, it's not going to give us the right answer for this question. But yeah, like, uh, I guess maybe for other situations, right, you might want to do that. Um, right, but I mean, you could also do something similar, but if we just have it in one loop. So if we go, yeah, 1 to 99, and then what we can say, well, the odd total is just going to be this one. And then if we just copy this, yeah, maybe I should have copied the other one. Um, well, the even total is therefore just going to be the index plus 1. Because if we think, well, if the index is 1, right, therefore the index plus 1 is going to be 2. Right, then the next iteration, well, the index is going to become 3. Uh, and then, of course, well, 3 plus 1, right, that's going to be 4. Um, so, I mean, yeah, let, let's just clear that uh, just to make sure it's working. Um, and again, yeah, that's also going to give us the same. So, I think for this one, I mean, there's, well, probably at least like 3, 4, yeah, uh, I guess even more, you know, sort of sensible solutions you could actually use.
Right, the next one, a global 1D array of strings contains the uh, three elements which are assigned values as shown. Um, right, just all A's, all B's, all C's. The procedure process manipulates the values in the array. Right, the procedure is written in pseudocode as follows. Right, now I think this maybe it's a good idea just to have a read through one time. So, right, so we declare, well, it's going to take a format which is going to be a string right, as a parameter um, yeah, or argument. Right, then we're going to declare our count index L, their integers, right, result is string, C is character. Right, first we assign the result just these four stars or four asterisks. Um, right, then we assign count as one, we'll just start the for loop and we go to the length of format. Um, and since format is a string, well, of course, this is looping through character by character. Um, all right, and then, yeah, in this case, they actually use step. So this is why it's good to actually know what this step does. Because, uh, yeah, I think, I think a lot of people actually don't know what this does. Um, right, then we're going to do C. So we assign that mid, uh, right, then the count. So this is the index and then one. Uh, so, yeah, this will just get the current character. Right, then we do L. So string to num, uh, mid, right, format, count one. Um, okay, I mean, so when we say mid, uh, so I, I guess what well, this is getting the next character. Um, yeah, yeah, so I mean, this one is just getting the next character. Right, then what we convert that to a number. Um, so if we look at the inputs, are they all going to be numbers? Uh, I mean, no, so. Okay, so I guess we have what, like a letter, then a number, then a letter, then a number. Uh, yeah, just alternating like that. Right then, well, the index is going to be the count plus one, div two. Um, right, so the the reason they do this is because let's say, for example, the count is, uh, well, I, okay, well, let's say the count is four. So if we do count plus one, that's going to be five. Um, and then yeah, if we do, well, five div two, all right, that's going to get us an index of two, which I guess, yeah, then, uh, well, they're using that index for the array. Um, yeah, because like what what they want effectively, I guess, is they want. Uh, what is that? Um, right. Okay. I mean, so that, right, they're they're not actually. I, I guess here then. Yeah, they're assigning this to the array. Um, I mean, like what what they want is, for example, they don't want the count to be. Like for, well, okay, so they don't want the count to go one, then three, then five, because like in that case you have nothing in index two in the array. Okay, you have nothing in index four in the array. Um, yeah, that's why they're going. Uh, well, that's why they're doing this, because I guess what well, if we do one plus one, um, right? Then div two. Well, that's. I mean, yeah. Well, that's just going to be one. Uh, right. Then the next iteration, if we do uh, what three plus one, um, div two, that's going to be two. Right. The next one, what five plus one, div two. Right. That's going to be three. Um, yeah, just calculating the correct index position. Uh, right then, I guess what X is going to yeah convert this to upper. Right, Y is going to go to lower, and Z is just going to uh, well prepend. Um, so yeah, prepend means like add it before, uh, and obviously well yeah concatenate with this data. Um, yeah, the, well the index. Um, right, okay, and then yeah, I guess what well, then they do left of this result. Uh, so L is going to be the number of characters. Yeah, so that that's based on a string. Uh, then just what well, assign the I guess we can say what well, assign it to the data array like at this particular index. Okay, so I put the window side by side just so it's easier to complete. Um, right, first then when we call it, well, we're going to be assigning to this result as we see here. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. And since this is a string, well, it should be inside quotes. Um, right, so we just have, what is it, four, yeah, four asterisks. Uh, right, then we have a loop. So if we have a loop, uh, I think we should actually start a new row. Um, so count starts at one. Right, then we said C. So this is getting well the mid of format, uh, right, the count. So, well, this is the current index and then just one. So here then we're just getting the current character, which is just going to be X. Um, and yeah, since that's a character, I guess, well, we can, uh, we can just use single quotes if we want. Right, L, we said, well, I mean, that was going to get the next character uh, because we do this count plus one. Right, but then we convert well string to num, so right that's going to be three. Um, but yeah, this will be the integer three. Right, then we say the index, so that's the count plus one. Right, the count is one, so the count plus one is two, and then well two div two. Uh, right, that's going to be one. Right, then case of c, so right c is x. Therefore, uh, we look at the data index. Well, the data index is one. All right, so that's going to be these a's. Um, 
and then uh, yeah well then we just convert that to uppercase so the result therefore is going to be well six A's and I do I mean I, I yeah okay I will be honest I did check the mark scheme because I was wondering like, how they're going to fill up all of these rows um, so what they did is well they actually started a new right a new row for this case statement like I mean I, I don't know like I think for me like hopefully they would accept it if you also did this you know on this row um, because I mean I've also asked Cambridge you know like what are the rules for starting a new row because actually I mean actually each exam paper they use slightly different rules um, so yeah I mean hopefully they would be a little bit kind of lenient uh, you know if it, like if you have the correct answers but you know maybe just in the wrong row um, yeah hopefully they would still accept that right anyway so then well okay we do this left uh, write the result and then L so L is going to be three so that's when we get the three leftmost characters so the three leftmost characters of result well that's going to be these three A's um, and then yeah the index is one okay so that's going to go in this uh, yeah data one um, Okay, right, well then we just iterate again. So now count is therefore going to be three. And since we're starting a new loop, right, let's start a new line, or yeah, a new row. Uh, okay, so again, well, this is just going to get the current character, which is going to be Y. Uh, right, it's going to get the next number, right, that's going to be two. Um, the index is now going to be two because, well, what, three plus one is four. Uh, four div two is going to be two. Right, in this case, so case, right, so we're doing Y. Uh, yeah, that's of course going to be this one. Right, then we get, well, the data index, that's going to be uh, these Bs because we're index 2. Right, then we just convert that to lower. Uh, so that's going to be, right, yes, yeah, 6 lowercase Bs. Uh, yeah, okay, that's 6. Right, then we go, uh, well, data index 2, and we assign that the value, right, results, and right, L. So that's then where we get 2. Uh, yeah, okay, so, right, yeah, uh, right, I guess this one. Um, we get what the two leftmost characters. Yeah, and I suppose I mean using that same logic, right? We should actually put this one on this line. Um, and then right here, that's going to be what B B. Uh, okay, and then yeah, if we go to the next iteration. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, I, th I think I've done that correctly. Right. So the next iteration, well, that's going to be W. Uh, right then we get what four um, the index is going to be three because well five plus one div two Right in this case. Well, I mean W is not any of these case statements um, Therefore the result is just going to stay the same Then if we look at this final line uh, we get what left of result and then L so L is four right? We're just getting four characters um, So here then we're just going to be assigning what four yeah four lowercase b's uh, into this data index three um, and again, I, I guess, yeah, right, using that same logic, I guess we should probably put this in this row. Um, all right, so then it says the procedure is to be modified. If variable C is assigned a value other than X, Y, or Z, then the procedure error is called and passed the uh, value of variable C as a parameter. Right, this modification can be implemented by writing a single line of pseudocode. Right, so if, if we look then at this case statement, um, well, a case statement, hopefully people know, okay, we can have an otherwise, and otherwise just means, well, like, if it's not any of these conditions, um, yeah, then, of course, the otherwise is going to execute. So you can think, I mean, otherwise is basically like an else, um, but, yeah, of course, you know, for use in a case statement. Right, so the syntax for writing that, I mean, is, is similar to just if we have the normal, uh, yeah, the normal conditions, uh, we just go otherwise. Um, right then we should probably have the colon uh, Right and then what do we want to do? So we want to call error right with C as a parameter So remember if it's uh, hang on, right if it's a procedure we should use call um, Yeah, well, let's write that again um, Yeah, right, so let's call error uh, Right, I mean let's spell that correctly. So it's gonna be small r um, and then just well C as a parameter Right then state where this new line should be placed so I mean I guess he can say well after the Z condition line um, or well let's say before the end case. Uh, yeah, alright, let's say well before the end case keyword.
Number six says three points on a grid form a triangle with sides of length A, B and C as shown in the example. Right, a triangle is said to be right angled if the following test is true, where A is the length of the longer side. Right, so yeah, A squared equals B squared plus C squared, right, so just Pythagoras. Uh, well, yeah, right, a, right, it just tells us what A squared means. Uh, right, you can calculate A squared, B squared, C squared by using the coordinates of the end points of each line. Uh, for example, B squared is calculated as follows. Uh, right, so the end points P1 and P2 have the coordinates, well, 3, 2 and 6, 6, uh, which yeah, I guess we can see here. Uh, right, the value b2 is given by the formula, so we take, uh, I mean, basically what the difference in the x values, right, the difference in the y values, we square them. Um, yeah, I mean, so I mean, obviously this is just sort of, uh, I mean, yeah, this is just doing Pythagoras here, right, the sort of x difference, the y difference, um, and then, yeah, calculate in this triangle. Right, so a function, right, what is right angle, will take three sets of integers as parameters representing the coordinates of three endpoints that form a triangle. And return true if the endpoints form a right angle triangle, otherwise return false. Right, in pseudocode, the, uh, well, the caret operator uh, represents an exponent, which is the number of times the value is multiplied by itself. For example, the value, well, uh, yeah, I guess, well, value squared uh, is written as, well, value, right, then the caret two. Um, right, so we just want to complete this pseudocode. So I'm just going to copy this. Uh, yeah, let's just copy this uh, function header or well, function signature. Um, right, and yeah, let's just paste it in here. So what it tell, uh, yeah, well, what it told us then was that we can calculate the length of well ABC um, by just you know taking the difference between these. Uh, right, okay, all right. So th this is a little bit tricky um, because what we need to think, and yeah, maybe let's go back here to the example. Um, if, we, if we have a right angle triangle, uh, I mean, let's say this one. Now, let's say that this is kind of side one, or, well, I mean, not side, but let's say this is kind of angle one, uh, right? This is going to be angle two. Uh, I mean, let's say, well, this is kind of, yeah, I, well, I guess not really angle, right? Just point. Um, yeah, so point one, point two, point three. Um, and then what we can say then is that, well, the, the length of B, right, is therefore going to be what x1, uh, yes, yeah, sort of minus, you know, x2. Uh, right, C is obviously going to be what x, uh, yeah, x2 and what well, minus x3. Uh, right, A is therefore going to be uh, what x1 and x3. Um, and you, you know, I guess for us, you know, it doesn't really matter which one is which. Um, like, yeah, as, as long as we're just consistent. Right, so I think here then, well, let's just declare some variables. So maybe just A, B, C. Um, yeah, just the lengths. And if we think, I mean, yeah, possibly these could be real numbers. Um, right, so, and I guess, well, this is not really A, right, it's, it's actually going to be what A squared, B squared, C squared. Um, so, yeah, maybe let's write that. Right, so in order to calculate A squared, uh, we said, well, that's going to be, I mean, I think in our example, we said, what well, A1 and A, uh, sorry, yeah, X1, X3. Um, although, to be honest, I mean, we can just do, uh, yeah, we can just do X1 and X2. Um, right, okay, so that's going to be what x1 minus x2, and then, so I will actually say if we have it on the A-level syllabus, then this carrot is actually used for pointers instead. Like, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change this to the IG syllabus. Um, now, if you want to do exponents on the A-level syllabus, uh, you can just use this double kind of, uh, well, double asterisk, um, which, you know, they also have used in past papers as well. But yeah, I mean, let, let's just do the IG syllabus, right, just so we can use this operator. Um, right, so that's going to be to the power of 2, and I'm just going to put that in brackets, um, just so it's kind of obvious, uh, yeah, just so it's kind of obvious, um, you know, which operators are happening first. All right, so yeah, that should be okay, and then I'm just going to copy that and, of course, do it for, well, B and C. Um, so let's say, for example, B, that can be uh, maybe X1 and X3. Uh, yeah, of course, likewise, Y1, Y3. Uh, right, then let's say C, well, that's going to be X2 and X3. Uh, and again, well, Y2 and Y3. Um, right, so then how did we check? It said... 
So I, I guess, yeah, just based on this, uh, we want to see that if two of them added together are equal to another one. Um, now, th there is a long way you can do it, where, you, like, I mean, you might want to determine, well, which is the longest side. And, I mean, this is quite ugly, because, well, you need, like, a long, you know, if condition. Um, you could say, well, if a squared is bigger than, uh, okay, hang on, right, bigger than b squared, um, yeah, and a squared is bigger than, uh, right, bigger than c squared. Um, and then you'd also want to check, right, so then you want to go and, uh, and I guess, well, that's going to be, right, b squared plus c squared, um, right, is equal to a squared. Um, so, of course, you know, this would be one way to do it, although that is going to be quite long. And, and of course, you then need to go, uh, you then need to check, right, if b is the longest, right, or if c is the longest. Um, now, there is actually a way you can shorten this, where you can just say, well, if, uh, yeah, if a squared uh, right, is equal to b squared plus c squared, right, or if, uh, yeah, b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared, um, right, because, uh, yeah, well, or, right, c squared is equal to a squared or b squared. Because if we think, like, if, um, I mean, like, if, well, for example, like, uh, let's say if b squared is the biggest, well, if b squared is the biggest, then, like, a is never going to be equal to b squared plus c squared. Because, for example, like, well, let's say a squared is 10, but then, like, if b squared is 15, well, of course, like, I mean, no matter what we add here for this, uh, like, yeah, I, I guess, I mean, no matter what c squared is, uh, you know, of course, this is always going to be false. Um, because, well, uh, yeah, obviously, we're, like, already too big. So, I think what we can then effectively say is that, and, yeah, let me just put this on the other side, uh, just so it's a bit more, um, yeah, kind of, well, similar, uh, similar to how Pythagoras is actually written. Uh, so, I, I think we can just check these three different conditions. Um, and then, of course, well, the next one is therefore going to be what, uh, yeah, b squared is equal to a squared plus... Uh, right, a squared plus c squared. Um, all right, then, or that's going to be, yes, yeah, c squared is equal to uh, what a squared, right, plus b squared. Um, right, then, if that is, well, then we just want to return true. Uh, right, yeah, let's go else, uh, and this will just be return false. Um, yeah, then just end if. All right, let's go end function. Now, to be honest, I mean, well, of course, you could use this if statement like this. Um, I mean, technically, you could actually just write like this, where we just go return, and then, well, we, yeah, we just return this thing. Because if we think, I mean, this is just going to evaluate to a Boolean, and, of course, well, if it's true, right, therefore, it's going to return true. Uh, yeah, if it's false, right, therefore, it's going to return false. Um, but I think, I mean, in the exam, uh, I guess they do like you to be a little bit more explicit. Um, so I think, yeah, just use an if statement, really. Right then, I mean, let, yeah, I guess, well, let's think of some values we can use to test this. And I think the easiest way is if we set, uh, maybe we set this kind of first position as being the uh, origin. Um, so, right, this is going to be 0, 0. And then let's say, right, we have x2. So maybe we can say this is going to be 5, 0. Um, and then, yeah, let's say this one, uh, let's say, so this will just be on the y axis, but yeah, no x position. Um, right, so yeah, there's no x position, or well, I guess just zero x position. Uh, let's say, I don't know, like three for the y position. Um, and I mean, this should say true. Yeah, okay. Uh, like if, for example, we make this one x position, right, well, of course, now it should say false. Um, yeah, okay, all right, so I think this seems to be working. Right, then it says the test used to check if a triangle is right angle can be written in two ways. Uh, right, yeah, this, so I guess where they don't square root it. Uh, yeah, or this, where they just kind of square root both sides. Right, the symbol, okay, represents square root. Uh, yeah, I think we know that. Right, a new function square root is written to perform the square root operation. The function takes an integer number as a parameter and returns a positive real value representing the square root of the number. Um, during testing, it's found the square root function returns a value that is only accurate to four decimal places, right? For example, square root 25, okay, returns this uh, rather than the correct value of, well, 5.0. Uh, the function is right angled from part A is modified to use the new square root function to test if a triangle is right angled. Um, describe a problem that might occur when using the, um, right, the modified is right angle function and suggest a solution that allows the square root function to be used. Right, so, I mean, well, let's actually go back here because some people say, like, how do you calculate the square root in pseudocode? 
Now, of course, yeah, um, uh, I guess, you know, we don't have an actual square root function like this. But if you think, you know, just using exponents, well, you want to think, I mean, like what exponent can we use to get square root? Um, and I guess what well, that's just going to be 0 0.5. And likewise, of course, well, if we want the cube root, uh, well, the cube root, we can just go, you know, one third. Um, yeah, and I, I guess, yeah, I'm not, I think that should be correct. Right, then we want to describe a problem that might occur when using the modified is right angle function and suggest a solution that still allows the square root function to be used. Right, so I guess, well, the problem, you know, because of the, what, decimal inaccuracy, then it might give us the wrong answer. Like, it, it will tell us, well, maybe it is a right angle triangle or it's not a right angle triangle. Um, yeah, so, I mean, let's say that, right, because of the inaccuracy or maybe because of the decimal inaccuracy. Uh, right, let's say the function, um, let's say might return false instead of, uh, yeah, I, I guess, well, let's say might return false um, when it should return true, right, or vice versa. Uh, right, yeah, okay, or vice versa. Um, and I mean, if we think about this, like, this will probably be the more common situation where, let's say here, you know, you square root of 25, where, you know, it's, it's going to be more common that it gives us the right answer. Like, rather than, I don't know, like, we could try something maybe square root of, uh, I don't know, like, 25 point, uh, like, I don't know, like, 1724, you know, some random thing. Um, and like that's going to equal five. You, you know, probably this situation is quite rare because you, uh, I guess you know to get this exact decimal uh, that you know gives us this kind of whole number. Um, yeah, that's that's probably going to be you know quite rare that situation. Right. So I think for a solution, and I mean honestly, this doesn't seem like a good solution. But I mean, either you could just round it, so you could like round it to four decimal places, and you know just check the numbers are equal. Um, or you could have some range where as long as the range is, you know, less than this kind of margin of error, then you consider it to be a right angled. Um, yeah, I mean, so let, let's say that maybe either, uh, I know, maybe, yeah, yeah, uh, or let's say either round answers to four decimal places. Um, right, and check they are equal. Uh, right here and check they are equal um, yeah or allow a I don't know sort of specified margin of error um, now if anyone's actually curious I mean this is one of the challenges on the website and the challenge is actually well you know to make a square root function and the way that I did it, or well, the, yeah, the way that the, uh, the sort of challenge requires, uh, is something called the newton raphson method. Um, and I mean, well, Newton meaning, well, you know, Isaac Newton. Uh, I mean, Raphson, yeah, I'm not actually sure who that is. But, I mean, ba basically, you know, their solution of uh, well, how to calculate a square root, um, I mean, it's similar to their iterative solution for, uh, I guess, what, to, uh, let's say, finding the gradient of a line, where what you do is I mean basically well you, you start with some initial guess and I mean, I mean honestly I can't remember the exact solution um, or yeah the exact approach uh, you know that's why if you check this challenge on the website right you can see it um, but you know basically well they, they start with a guess and then if the guess is too high well then they're going to reduce that guess uh, of course if the guess is stu still too high right reduce it some more um, if the guess is what too low uh, well then of course they're going to you know, increment that or yeah just uh, you know sort of add to that guess um, and you know, well, basically, of course, you know, the more and more guesses you have, uh, well, the closer and closer you're going to get to the real answer. Um, and like, I mean, the well, the the way you can do that, of course, is because let's say, for example, uh, I know they're checking 81. Now, if they want the square root of 81, well, let's say first they guess at 10. Well, uh, right there, then of course they can check. Well, right, 10. Uh, okay, 10 times 10 is going to be 100. So they see, you know, 100 is bigger than 81. Um, that you know, I don't know, so like maybe next time they're going to guess eight, right? But then of course eight is too low, so of course they need to go up. 
Um, so I mean, like honestly, it's, it's actually not that complex. Uh, I think you can do the whole thing in like ten lines of code. Right, number seven, a fitness club has a computerized membership system. The fitness club offers a number of different exercise classes. The following information is stored for each club member, name, home address, email address, mobile phone number, uh, date of birth, and the exercises they are interested in. So yeah, I guess well, sort of one, right, one or many. Um, yeah, or even zero, possibly. Right, when an exercise class is planned, a new module will send personalized text messages to each member who has expressed an interest in that exercise. Um, <clears throat> okay, members wishing to join the class send a text message back. Members may decide not to receive future text messages by replying with the message stop. Right, the process of abstraction is used to filter out unnecessary information. Uh, state one advantage of applying abstraction to this problem. Um, okay, so I guess what you say is it's going to make the problem easier to understand. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think you could also say, uh, you know, because people only need to focus on their part. Um, you know, I know like, I guess what well, maybe some people need to focus on, say, the text message part. Uh, yeah, other people, I don't know, yeah, other people might need to, you know, focus on some other part. Um, I mean, yeah, so I, I guess, you know, you could mention that if you want, right? The, uh, obviously, yeah, the, I, I guess what well, only the information required, right, for each worker to, you know, do their job, um, yeah, is going to be given to them. Right then, identify three items of information that will be required uh, well, for by the new module. Right, justify your choices with reference to the given scenario. Um, and yeah, I mean that, that's often the key thing, right? So some, I mean, sometimes you just want to give a general answer, like if they're just asking, uh, I don't know, like why is encryption used? But often, like if they give you a scenario like this, um, then yeah, they are they are kind of uh, expecting you to actually like write your answer, well, obviously in reference to this. Um, yes, to kind of explain and you know with examples. Right, so the first bit of information. Well, I mean, let's let's try and look for all three. Uh, since it says personalized text messages, well, then they're going to want the name. Um, I mean, of course, well, the text messages. You know, they're also going to need the phone number. Right, obviously knowing like who to send it to. Um, and then I guess what also the exercises that they're interested in, because. I mean, well, like you can think. Well, let's say if a member is interested in two exercises. Right, well then they should get you know two text messages um, obviously yeah one for each or obviously if they're interested in well no exercises right they're not going to get any um so yeah let's just say that right it's going to be name uh well let's well let's say mobile phone number um and then this one is what the exercises they're interested in Um, right then, the justification uh, where it says, I mean, what text messages have to be personalized. Uh, yeah, let's say should be personalized, right, according to the instructions. Or maybe, yeah, maybe according to requirements. Um, right then, I mean, why do they need a mobile phone? I guess what to send the text message to the correct number. Uh, yeah, okay, to correct number. Right then, three, uh, the exercise they're interested in, I guess what to only send text messages to people that are interested. I mean, I mean, like honestly, it feels like we're just repeating the same thing. Um, but let's go. Yeah, uh, well, maybe to only send. Uh, yeah, text messages. Uh, right, to people that are considering signing up for this class. Uh, yeah, signing up. Uh, right for this class. Right, identify two operations that would be required to process data when the new module receives a text message back from a member. So people often get confused when it says operations, but I mean, you can just say sort of like functions, right? Functions, procedures, um, yeah, just like two parts of the code, you know, what are they gonna have to do? Um, 
so I guess, well, one thing, it needs to sort of read the text message content because, of course, what if they say stop? Well, of course, yeah, that's going to stop sending the messages. Um, I guess, yeah, if they say anything else, uh, well, probably that's going to sort of confirm their interest or confirm their joining. Um, so, yeah, let's see what read the text message content. Uh, right, let's say, yeah, to provide appropriate action. Uh, right, let's go e.g. Uh, I mean, why, I mean, let's say what's stopping. Yeah, stopping um, sort of sending future text messages. Uh, right, future messages, uh, let's say if the user sent stop. Then for operation two, I think we can probably just say uh, maybe confirming their identity yeah, or maybe authenticating them. Um, so right, let's go confirming, uh, yeah, confirming their identity right, based on their phone number. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that should be okay. Because, for example, like, obviously, while well, you would want to check, you know, has this person been added to the sort of interested list? Um, or, yeah, maybe is this from, like, some, you know, some, like, completely random phone number? Um, because, like, obviously, I mean, if, like, if they're just going to receive a message from any number, then, yeah, you'd want to make sure that, you know, this person is, uh, I guess, well, you'd want to make sure that, yeah, they're just not some complete, like, random person, like a spam message or something. Um, right, so yeah, based on their phone number. And then I think, I mean, maybe for this operation one, we've actually said multiple things, right? Because, I mean, while reading the message, I mean, that can probably be one operation. Um, and then, like, the other operation, uh, like, yeah, for example, like, I uh, saw what, deleting them from the messaging list. I mean, that can probably be another operation. So I feel this one, maybe we've said two here. Right, so the structure chart illustrates part of the membership program. Uh, so we've got some update, right? This then has a decision, which is this A. Um, yeah, this A here, right? Then this is going to take a, uh, well, P2. So this is a well, parameter argument. Um, now, when it's black, you know, the black circle, uh, that means it's going to be a Boolean, right, or a flag. And when we have this double arrow, uh, so yeah, the double arrow like this, uh, well, this means it's going to be using by ref. Um, now, if you don't know what by ref means, I've actually got another video. I think maybe it's called like stock item. Uh, yeah, this was one of the previous questions. Uh, yeah, maybe stock item or kind of like update stock. Um, so if you just go on my channel and, you know, search either of these, uh, yeah, this should hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully return the video about, you know, well, by val and by ref. Um, yeah, just to clear up any misunderstanding, right, if, if you have it. Um, but um, I mean, I guess, well, just quickly, like if we say by val, well, that means that when you uh, when you actually call a functional procedure, then a copy of that parameter is going to be created, and any change that you make right to that value or to that variable, um, you know, inside that module, well, that uh, let's say you know those changes are not going to be reflected, um, yeah, back in the original variable that you called. So, for example, let's say you got a function, uh, and obviously this is just shorthand, right? We've got some variable called a. Um, and let's say here we just go what a and let's just assign it a times two. Uh, and then let's say here we just go uh, and of course well let's go our end function. Um, so let's say here maybe we just go output. So uh, and I guess well let's call that maybe yeah x. So if we just go output x and let's have a variable. Uh, I mean yeah this is getting you know quite confusing now. Um, right okay so let's say we have a variable like which has the value five. Now, what we're doing then is, well, we're, we're passing, you know, five or, yeah, this variable into this uh, function. And, of course, well, at this point, uh, you know, of course, well, the value is going to be 10. But, like, this a is actually going to be a copy of the variable. So, if, for example, we then go output n, well, this output n is still going to say five. Um, because, yeah, like, well, I mean, basically, like, a copy of this n has been created. Uh, that's why, like, when we're actually changing it here, you know, that's not going to change the original. 
Now, if instead we're using by ref, which is this one, um, well, by ref, I mean that, I mean, well, okay, let's say that means that a copy won't be created because what we're doing is, well, we're just passing in the memory address for this n. Uh, therefore, you know, when we change, uh, well, when we change, in this case, you know, n or a, um, you know, like, I mean, basically, well, they're just pointing to this n, um, right? It's just pointing to one variable. Um, yeah, therefore, in this case, when we do output n, right, I mean, that's just going to return, or, well, okay, sorry, that's going to output 10, uh, you know, because, well, that's been updated here. Um, I mean, yeah, probably that's a terrible explanation. So if you want to see a better explanation, uh, again, probably just check out these. Right, anyway, then, uh, yeah, and no, I, I guess, I mean, the, the next one's quite simple. Um, so here we're saying, well, this P1 is going to be an input parameter. Uh, of course, you know, this one, right, this is going to be the return value. Right, so it says, uh, the name contains the name of a club member. P1 and T1 are of type real. Explain the meaning of the diamond symbol, right, label with the letter A in the chart. Uh, okay, so that's going to be what a decision. Uh, right, let's say a. Uh, I, I guess we can say decision, right, or selection. Yeah, let's say a selection statement. Um, and selection, well, that can be right if. Uh, yeah, I guess or right case. Um, a selection statement. Uh, let's say yeah, that will decide what. Uh, yeah, right. So I mean. I, I guess we don't really know if they're functions or procedures. I mean, like this one has to be a function. Um, I suppose this one, I mean, yeah, this one will actually be a procedure because well, it's not returning anything. Uh, then if we look at this one, I mean, if it's by val, uh, sorry, okay, right, if it's by ref, um, then I mean, that means, well, you know, that's just gonna be a procedure. Um, and yeah, since we're actually not actually returning anything normally, uh, then yeah, so this is gonna be a procedure, this is gonna be a function, right, that's gonna be a procedure. Um, but I mean, let's say module, uh, I guess, yeah, because we can say module to, you know, refer to all of them um, as like an umbrella term. Right, so a selection statement that, uh, let's say, decides, uh, right, decides what module. Um, and I mean, let's list all of these. So let's go sub A, uh, right, yeah, sub B, uh, right, or sub C, yeah, I guess subroutine. Um, yeah, I, I guess what to call. I mean, I think, yeah, that should be okay. Okay, I'm not sure what happened. I think I had some corruption issues with the video, so I'm just gonna record this part again. Uh, we wanna write the pseudocode module headers for sub A and sub B. Um, and I'm just gonna write them up here since I can see it. Uh, right, so sub A, we think, well, this is gonna take a name parameter, right? It's gonna take a, well, Boolean flag. And yeah, this is gonna be by reference uh, because we've got the double arrow. Um, and, yeah, I think we said this one can be a procedure um, since we're not actually returning a normal variable. Um, because, like, if we're using by ref, well, basically, you know, the variable is being updated directly, uh, similar to, like, a global variable, how that's updated. Um, yeah, we're not actually using return statement. Right, so, yeah, that's going to be why it's a procedure and why it's not going to be a function. Right, so the name was going to be sub A, uh, right, the parameters, let's go name. Uh, that's going to be of type string. Um, right, I'm going to do this sort of on a new line because it's uh, yeah, kind of using up too much space. Uh, right, so then we want to go by ref. Um, or in fact, yeah, maybe I don't need to. Uh, right, so by ref, that's going to be P2, and this is going to be Boolean. Um, yeah, and then that, that should be all we need. Right, then for sub B. Uh, yeah, maybe let me just write it here. Um, so we said this one is a function because, well, we're taking P1 as a, uh, let's say, parameter, as an argument, right? But then we're returning this T1. Uh, so yeah, because we're returning T1, right, therefore it's going to be a function. Uh, right, so, and I think here it says, yeah, I mean, well, so obviously P1 is going to be a real. Um, and then write T1 is also a real. So let's just go returns real. Now for the last question, uh, question eight says, a teacher is designing a program to process uh, pseudocode projects written by her students. <coughs> uh, each student project is stored in a text file. The process is split into a number of stages and each stage performs a different task and creates a new file, all right, named as shown. <clears throat> um, okay, 
So I guess what Michael a day, right, underscore source, uh, yeah, text file. Right, so that's going to be a student project produced by student Michael a day. Uh, right, then we've got the next one. So that's going to be what appended with S1, right, file produced by stage one. Yeah, the next one, right, S2, right, stage two. The teacher has defined the first program module as follows, right, delete comment. That's called with a parameter of type string representing a line of pseudocode from a student's project file. It's then going to return the line after removing any comments and, well, about comments, a comment starts with two forward slash characters <clears throat> uh, right, and includes all the remaining characters on the line. The following example shows a string before and after the comment has been removed. Right, okay, so, I mean, if we just think about how we can do this, like, I think the best way is, well, of course, well, uh, you know, we want to find out where these two characters are, so just looping through character by character. And what we can use is we can use mid. And rather than just uh, sort of having the what third parameter as one, which means you know just get one character, uh, we can have that third parameter as two, right? So basically, you know, get the next two characters. Um, and of course, yeah, if that equals like a double slash, uh, well, then what we would want to do is we would then just want to actually go back one character, right? So do kind of minus index, um, and then we would just return. Uh, well, we would return mid, right? Starting from character one. Um, and then sort of going from the sort of current index minus one. Uh, yeah, I think that should do it. Um, and I suppose like if we never see that, well, then we would just return the original line um, because of course, you know, that means there's no comments right in this particular line. Um, so yeah, let's try and do that. And again, you know, of course you can get the starter code for this. Um, I mean, I guess there's actually no starter code, but yeah, there is just an example file that we can use. And if we actually look while well, this example file, uh, this is actually one that I just uploaded. Uh, you can see what nearly a year ago now. Um, and yeah, this is just the one, you know, doing the square root method, uh, right? Yeah, using this newton Raff uh, right, newton Raphson approach. Um, okay, so yeah, let's think then why well, it's going to be a function. Uh, so let's just go right function and it's what delete comment. Um, right, so this takes a parameter and they didn't actually tell us the name, so we can call it anything. Uh, let's just call it line. Uh, and let's go return string, because um, of course, well, this is going to return, yeah, the line with the comment removed. Now, I think here we actually probably don't need to declare any variables, uh, although, yeah, I will leave space just in case we do. Um, right, so let's, I mean, if we want to loop through character by character, well, then, of course, uh, let's go index. Right, we'll start that at one, and let's go well, to the length of line. Now, of course, I mean, yeah, obviously, well, if we're looping through character by character, of course, we're just going to use mid one. Um, but yeah, right. In in this case, uh, so I mean, let's try and determine if, yeah, if the current position kind of has, uh, I, I guess, what two forward slashes after it. So we want to go right if mid, and um, that's going to be line, right? So line is the string, uh, the starting position is going to be the index, and then we want to get the next two characters, or I, I guess, well, yeah, this character and, you know, the next one. Uh, right, so if that's equal to these, um, well, then what we want to do, we just want to go return, and let's go mid. Uh, so again, we're going to, well, um, yeah, obviously, while well, line is going to be the string, uh, we're going to start at one. And then we're just going to go to the index minus one, because if we think, well, the index is going to be, uh, you know, this first, um, yeah, this sort of first, you know, slash character. Uh, right, therefore, yeah, of course, therefore, we want to go minus one, right? We want to get the character before that. Um, and yeah, okay, so I, I think that should work. Right, then let's just go end if, and right, let's just go next index. And of course, well, here, if it's exited the for loop, uh, you know, without ever returning anything, um, well, that means that obviously this line had no comments. So in that case, what well, we can just go return line. Um, and then, yeah, I think that should work. So I'm actually going to try just with a few different examples, right? Let's say the first one. Uh, right, let's go delete comment and yeah, let's just paste that. Um, right, let's also go delete comment and we'll have something with no comments. Uh, let's go, well, like, I don't know, maybe output A plus B. Um, and right, let's have something with a comment. Um, I don't know, just get yeah, output, right, like result, something like that. And yeah, let's see if these work. 
Um, yeah, so the, the first one, well, because the comment is kind of the first line, right, then it's just going to be empty. Um, yeah, because obviously, well, we've sort of removed everything. Uh, and then, yeah, these two are working, right, and obviously this one with the comment removed. And notice that if we look here, we have no space at the end, where if we look here, well, we do have that one space at the end, um, because, of course, we have the space here. Um, so, yeah, I think that's good. Right, then the next, uh, okay, yeah, so we've done that. Um, and, uh, okay, actually, right here, they do actually give us the uh, function header. So, yeah, we didn't need to write that. Right, a second module is to find stage one. It's called with a parameter of type string representing a student name. Right, we want to create a new stage one file. It's going to copy each line from the student's project file to the stage one file. Right, after removing any comment from each line. Right, we don't write blank lines to the stage one file and uh, returns the number of lines written to the stage one file. Um, okay, then it says module delete comment must be used in your solution. Right now, we want to think that stage one, well, is this going to be a functional procedure? Now, since here it says returns, well, that's going to be a function. Um, yeah, and I think, I mean, right, I'm just going to copy these instructions, right, since there is a little bit we need to do here. Um, right, so I'm just going to copy these under this one, uh, and then, yeah, hopefully now we can just uh, directly start coding it. Right, so this one again, this is also going to be a function. It's going to be what stage one, and write a parameter of type string representing a student name. Uh, I mean, for let's let's just go student name. Right, and then what is this going to return? It's going to return the number of lines written. So that's going to be an integer. Right, so here then, I mean, if we want to return the number of lines returned, I mean, that's going to be what account. Um, yes, yeah, so what the number of lines written. So let's go uh, count, I guess, what lines written or just count should be okay. Uh, right, that's going to be an integer. Now, do we need anything else? I mean, I guess one will need the file name. Um, so we can say this will be the source file name. And let's also say the uh, what stage one file name. Uh, so let's go, yeah, source file name. Um, or let's say, yes, yeah, stage one file name. Uh, okay, and then, yeah, I think we probably probably want a line variable. Um, because, I mean, th this will be the, uh, let's say, the result of calling, uh, you know, delete comment. Um, right, then, is... Yeah, is there anything else? <clears throat> um, right, I, mean, I think, again, maybe that's enough. I'm just going to leave them to have space just in case. Now, what we want to do first, then, we want to open these two files. Um, or I guess, well, let's actually first uh, just, yeah, assign these files. Uh, well, like, yeah, I guess, right, let's assign the, you know, file name to these variables. Um, so the source file name, well, that's going to be the student name. And then if we actually looked, what well, then it was going to be an underscore. Uh, right, then it's going to be source and then just dot txt. Right, and then the stage one file name. Um, well, again, right, that was going to be the student name. And then this time, uh, what's just going to be underscore was it S1. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to check the capitalization. I think it was capital letters. Um, yeah, capital letters. Right, so yeah, that should be okay. So let's open the source file name, and this is the one we want to read. So let's go for read, right? Then let's go open file, uh, stage one file name, and this will be for write. Um, and yes, yeah, some people might, well, some people sometimes ask, you know, can you open two files at the same time? Um, and yeah, of course, well, here we can. Um, like, I mean, you, well, of course, you couldn't have it where you open like source file name for read, you, uh, unless they also open the same file for write at the same time. Um, but yeah, like obviously, as long as they're different files, you know, that's fine. Right, so if we want to read line by line, well, then we can just use a while loop. Uh, so let's go while not end of file, and that's going to be the source file name. Um, yeah, let's just end the while. Then what we want to do, well, then we just want to read that line, uh, yeah, into this line variable. So, right, let's go read file, and that's going to be the source file name, and we're just reading that into the line variable. Um, right, then I guess we just want to remove the comment. So if we go line, uh, right, delete comment, and that takes the parameter of line. Um, yeah, I guess, well, the argument line. Um, right, and then it says, 
Uh, okay, so right, we want to copy each line from the students project to the stage one file. Um, yeah, and well, that means we're after removing any comments from each line, right? And we don't write blank lines to the stage one file, uh, right? We return the number of lines written. Okay, so I, I guess we're here then for this count lines written. Uh, let's just initialize that to zero, and we just want to say if, right? So if the line is not equal, um, right, to an empty string like that. Uh, of course, this one you could also use length, right? So if length of line is zero, um, yeah, I mean that's going to be equivalent. Right, then what we want to do, so here, well, one, we just want to increment the lines written. Um, of course, well, then we just want to write this. So let's use write file, and we write into the stage one file name. Um, and yeah, we're just writing this line. So yeah, I mean, I think that's all we need to do, right? Then, of course, we just return. Um, yeah, okay. So right here then, I mean, let's make sure just to close the files. So the source file name, right? Yeah, close, right, stage one. And let's just go return the count lines written. Um, all right, and then, I mean, if, if we just call that, so, all right, it's a function, let's go output, uh, right, stage one, and uh, let's go Michael a day. Um, yeah, that should be okay. Uh, right, so here it's saying, we've written 17, but nothing has actually been written. Um, okay, all right, yeah, that's my stupid mistake. Um, of course, this should be, right, if line, right, if length of line is not equal to zero. Um, and then, yeah, that, that seems to work, right? It's, it's removed all the comments. Now, of course, you know, you could test this with some like more simple example if you wanted, um, but yeah, I think that's working. Um, all right, and yeah, guys, it seems then that was the last question. So as always, well, hopefully this video was useful. Uh, if it was, uh, of course, well, yeah, feel free to watch the next video. Um, or any questions, then just ask them in the comments and either me or someone else will try to answer. All right, so yeah, see you next time.